we are at the end of the first week of Black History Month, but don't worry. We have more disability history to share with you all for the rest of the month of February. This video will touch on disability and slavery. Let's begin with abolitionist, feminist, and suffragette Sojourner Truth. Despite being illiterate, she was a gifted orator who published a best-selling autobiography entitled The Narrative of Sojourner Truth, A Northern Slave. And I think it's so important to discuss Sojourner Truth as a Northern slave because many fail to realize slavery existed in the North. The North is not exempt from racism. It wasn't back then and it isn't now. The book documented her experiences as an enslaved woman who fled to freedom with her infant daughter. She was the daughter of an enslaved African father captured in Ghana and a mother who was the daughter of enslaved Africans captured in Guinea. During her childhood, she was raped and beaten repeatedly by two white men who enslaved her. The wife of her enslaver, John Dumont, would abuse and harass Sojourner Truth as well. Dumont struck a deal with Sojourner Truth to grant her freedom. He later reneged on that agreement, claiming her hand injury, aka her disability, made her less productive. Therefore, she should remain enslaved. She decided against that and decided to escape to freedom with her newborn daughter, Sophia. For years, Sojourner Truth hid her disability. As you can see in photos and paintings, her disabled right hand is often hidden behind knitting needles, yarn, flowers, or other objects. Disability identity is very complex given the experience of enslaved Africans with disabilities or who were elderly. They sustained a different level of neglect and abuse and it was violent and traumatic. Many were often abandoned, conveniently granted freedom um, from their enslavers, so they wouldn't be financially required to take care of them and feed them, even though they didn't take care of them. They enslaved them and worked them to death until state governments intervened, creating laws to make it illegal to abandon a disabled slave. Some were killed for being disabled. Others developed disabilities from the heinous abuse of enslavers, including traumatic brain injuries. Some enslavers trafficked their slaves and leased and sold them for medical experiments, making them disabled. Sojourner Truth rarely spoke about her disability, but she sold pictures of herself to finance her public appearances. The need to show strength in those photos may have motivated her to hide her hand injury in portraits and pictures. It seems like this continues today in our community with many of us feeling that if we are vulnerable and reveal hidden disabilities we have, I'm a disabled black woman. It goes against the expectation that we be strong black women. We aren't allowed to be vulnerable for fear that it will be used against us and add to the discrimination we already feel as black people. It's hard enough being black, so why add more hardship by revealing you're different and have a chronic illness, injury, or disability, or cancer, or struggle with your mental health? That Sojourner Truth may have felt the same shame and stigma. Regardless, she is still a disabled icon. She changed her name from Isabella to Sojourner Truth after hearing God's spirit tell her to speak the truth. She championed women's rights with an intersectional approach, addressing the erasure of black women by both white and black people through her Ain't I a Woman speech. Like many black feminists back then and now, she faced criticism from all fronts and opposition from black men due to massage noir and white women as well, specifically from a notable black man in history who too escaped slavery. His name was Frederick Douglass. He referred to Sojourner Truth as uncultured while supporting white women suffragists with racist reputations like Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. 
Sojourner Truth withstood being excluded by white suffragists and disrespected by white abolitionists and stayed committed to many causes. She recruited black soldiers to fight in the Civil War, helped enslaved people escape to freedom and gave lectures across the United States about the plight of enslaved black women who were already erased and seen as invisible in most liberation conversations and discourse. She famously said, it is the mind that makes the body. Disabled bodies are capable of making history too. Now, Sojourner Truth's work was pivotal. She resisted disrespect and stood her ground and set ablaze a generation of black feminists who would lead movements for black women's equality. And I'm so proud she was a disabled woman like me and I'm moved by her story.